just so this is going to be interesting. I have decided to read a chapter of my book. It is in the second draft. So it's still pretty raw. It's going to need some adjustments. But I thought, well, why not take the opportunity to read out and share a chapter of the book it is that I'm currently writing, Be More Wolf, A Survivor's Story, Breaking the Trauma Cycle. I'm going to be talking about a chapter, well, part, an element of a chapter that I've just written in part three, chapter three of Be More Wolf, and that is focused in on resistance to change. Something I see an awful lot with people who have experienced ongoing and repeat trauma is that resistance, the trauma denial. So I talk about it in my, in the chapter and I give my personal perspective on why I think that is. So forgive me if I'm looking a bit weird at the screen. It is because I'm reading from my notes. Let's just check out. Now, Facebook was telling me to share this video, but I can't actually see where I need to share the video from. So that's not very useful. Cross pose. Here we go. Cross pose. Yes, yes, yes. Let's just tick all of these. Save. This is a real pain because it means that I take my attention off you, which I don't think is the smartest move. Turn on auto generated captions. Oh, that's new. That never used to be there before. I'm not even live. That would be highly embarrassing. So just bear with me a second. Don't get bored or frustrated and leave me. No, don't leave me. I have abandonment issues. <laughs> Page. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, there must be an easier way. There must be an easier way. Yes, I can see that I'm live. Fabulous. Fabulous. So if you've got any questions as I'm reading from the book, just pop them below. No, that wasn't not a quote. That was just me kicking the table. Pop them below. If you're watching the video on replay, it's fine more people watch on replay than they do live just and you've still got a question you can either send me a direct message or you can just leave a message below okay this is a first time of doing this for me so i'm not quite sure how it's go i'm probably going to trip over my words i'm probably going to struggle with a sentence that i have written but I just really want you to feel the rawness of what it is that I have written rather than it being super polished because it's still got to go to the um, editors to be jiggled around so it makes perfect sense. So I wrote about in chapter three, um, the resistance to change that naturally occurs when you are looking to work with your own trauma and you'll also probably see it in clients that you're working with in friends that you um, know well you'll be able to pick up the warning signs pretty quickly once it is you know what you're looking for so let's get going hopefully this isn't going to be too monotone and i'm going to settle into it and not feel so anxious about reading <laughs> Well, watch this space. Let's see how it goes. Resistance to change. 
When you start to challenge your thinking, you naturally end up creating a feeling of resistance. I don't want to do that. That's not for me. I'll do it tomorrow. That doesn't fit in with my values. I don't have the time. It's not how I want to be doing things. I feel frightened. And the list, let's face it, goes on and on and on. Now, this is perfectly natural. The trick is not to be fooled by this illusion. At times for me, it felt emotionally exhausting, really hard work. It felt like my mind and body was doing its best to gang up on me and stop me from changing and challenging the way I was doing and seeing things. Remember what I said earlier, the ego is designed to keep you out of harm's way. When you challenge your thinking subconsciously, you feel a sense of danger. This danger then triggers a level of inner resistance. It wants to stop you from exploring, challenging and taking a closer look at the underlying trauma that is keeping you stuck, putting you in harm's way, stopping you from achieving what it is that you actually want to be doing. That's the ego's job. So you're going to feel some level of discomfort, some level of personal resistance to making the changes you need to make. Don't be fooled by your own mind. It's not that you're not capable of making the changes. It's not that you're not willing to do the work. It's that the ego is working hard in the background trying to keep you safe. One of the ways it does this is to create a level of personal and inner resistance to change. Does that sound familiar? Have you experienced a situation where you've wanted to do something, but you are experiencing such a, 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 like an internal conflict, you wanna do it, but no, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. This is okay, and it's a good sign that this is what you need to be paying close attention to and looking at more deeply. I would often find myself getting stuck, trapped in an emotional loop of sabotaging my, my success. I didn't even realize I was in it. I thought that I was the problem and would psychologically beat myself up because I just couldn't get my head around why I was failing all the time. My inner resistance would often show up for me as an overwhelming sense of terror or fear. I would refuse to do things, often end up with a three day migraine. I shut down emotionally and I need to sleep excessively. Mood swings, constant constantly being emotionally triggered and hijacked withdrawing from people and myself and i quite often feel a sense of wanting to give up and feeling hopeless i'd feel all consumed by heavy emotions to the extent that i would feel as if I was walking through cement. I've learned how to navigate and manage heavy emotions by using the trauma recovery method, self-coaching and journaling ritual. A step-by-step -step guided self-coaching process I have specifically to designed to help me get under the skin and unfold why I'm feeling such heavy and intense emotions or a level of emotional disturbance without, of course, very important, re-traumatizing myself. The process takes you on a step-by-step -step journey using a series of questions and allows you to surrender to the situation you are experiencing in that moment, creating a safe, and secure space that enables you to connect emotionally with the mind and body, connect to self while providing yourself with comfort, compassion, 
unconditional love and unconditional love all the ingredients needed to help you start recovering and healing the trick is not to hide from your emotions the emotional turmoil you find yourself in it's not about brushing things under the carpet it's about acknowledging the importance of what's happening to you in the here and now what is it from your past that is impacting on the here and now and interfering with your future what has caused you to be emotionally triggered that needs to be honored in this moment that needs to be looked at now it's showing up for a reason to let you know that something unconsciously is stopping you you have a choice you can stay stuck in your past or you can step forward and start moving towards your future hopefully i don't sound too monotone or too drony <laughs> let me know in the comments <laughs> We are all a work in progress. To say I have 100% dealt with the trauma I have experienced during my lifetime would be an absolute lie. You can't expect to recover and heal from traumatic events that you've been living with the consequences of for over 40 years or, or however long, however long it has been. For you to suddenly click your thin fingers and for everything to stop and vanish overnight what you can do however is learn the strategies needed to be a continuous work in progress to become consciously aware of what from your past is interfering with your future so you're always constantly moving forward and not letting trauma from your past dictate and sabotage your future to always be inquisitive, curious, checking in, checking out, investigating, exploring, and not settling for what you believe to be true in this moment. I've cleared a ton of emotional baggage and now work consciously every day to make sure I don't fall back into old ways of doing things and bad habits that were familiar to me for so long. Ritual, routine, consistency, and commitment is the foundation from which you can adjust your perception and behavior accordingly, if appropriate. It is no different, it is no different than making a commitment to yourself to go to the gym and lose weight and build muscle. The only difference is that you are consciously exercising your mind and body emotionally and energetically enabling you to reach peak performance this is where so many people fall down and let themselves off the hook they self-abandon slip back into what is familiar and nothing changes they allow life to happen to them and go back to playing the victim shrinking back to the size that the ego wants them to play life at. The level of personal pain and suffering people put themselves through rather than seeking help, the help they need to recover and heal from a traumatic event or events is quite staggering. Let's just say you have developed a problem with your heart and you've been advised to have an operation. If you don't have the operation, your quality of life will significantly deteriorate. While you are concerned about having an operation, you know it is in your best interest and a necessity. If you don't have it, you will risk putting your body under a considerable amount of unnecessary stress, which may lead to a heart attack. You also have to put a limit on the things that you can do. Eventually, this will take a toll on significant others, friends, your mental and emotional health. So the chances are if you're offered an operation, you're going to take it. It's a no brainer because the short term pain far outweighs the long term gain. 
you are prepared to put yourself under the knife to be uncomfortable, to take time to recover and heal because you know that it's in your best interest and others are also telling you that it's in your best interest. You have a lot of support from your doctor, other professionals, your family, and are encouraged to actively take the operation. Why is it that we don't look at trauma recovery and healing the same way? Why is it that we make ourselves suffer for so long, even when we know we could get help? Why do we stay stuck in the misery of trauma, letting it snatch the best years of our lives away from us? Why do we not learn from other people's mistakes? Why do we have to hit rock bottom to pick ourselves back up again? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. They like that. See you later. Where was I? That was my neighbour just dropping some dog food down. We've got um, we've got two street dogs who get all the get all of the leftovers which is nice. So tonight, I think they've got chicken and prawns. They have <laughs> quite a lavish life. <laughs> yeah, so where was I? I think there is something twisted about the way society looks at trauma, the stigma, judgment, criticism. Even accessing mental health services, in my experience, is a challenge. In most cases, you literally either have to be suicidal, a risk to self or others, or be experiencing extreme emotional pain even torture, emotional torture. But even then, with all these challenges, it still can be a fight for many to get the help they need and to be able to access services. On top of this, there is then the additional pressure of the hmm, can okay, need to change that. Note to self, I'm not sure what that means. The additional pressure of the societal and personal shame that you're, that you're sick in your head, evil, less than. Judgments stop people from talking. I'm sharing, talking and sharing their story. It's only by sharing one story that we can learn and be able to shift our perspective. My trauma was devastating, an emotionally crippling trap. It kept me stuck, a prisoner, held, held me captive on so many levels. Yet, for many years, I didn't, pay, I didn't pay it any attention. I live on the edge of the jungle, so if you're wondering what all the noises are, dogs, birds, <laughs> cats, bikes, cars, the lot. <laughs> Um, I didn't pay, I didn't pay it the attention it deserved until I finally made the commitment to change at my core. I was ready and had the right determination, the grit and the willingness to push through any resistance I was going to face. I was going to push to the other side regardless of any level of fear and self-doubt I had that was going to play out. Not so long ago I learned to ride a motorbike. At the time I had no desire to ride. To ride. The thought of it alone terrified me. I don't even drive a car because I'm frightened to be in control of a vehicle as I experience seven, um, sensory overwhelm. If there's too much going on around me, I find it difficult to focus on what needs my attention. Steve taught me to ride the motorbike because he used to be a motorbike instructor. I spent a couple of days with him learning, then I was on my way. When I first started to ride, I came off several times, mainly due to my lack of confidence and going around very, very sharp corners, squeezing the brakes on too quickly. 
but I was lucky. I didn't actually hurt myself. I did, however, <laughs> beat the bike up quite badly. I came off five times over one month, twice in the same week. As you can imagine, this shook me up. Even though I had come off numerous times, I had, I made myself get back on. That does not mean to say that I was not frightened because I was, but I knew that learning to ride a bike requires practice. Where I live in Thailand, we don't have access to public transport. I knew if I did not get back on the bike and continue to learn to ride, ride it, I would really be limiting my life choices and what I would be able to do. I have limited access to shops here, not able to work at different locations. I would be stuck in the house and I'd also lose contact with my friends and reduce human connection with other people. Oh. I'd have limited access also to the types of food that I like. Even though I was crapping myself, I was able to recognize that I would lose an awful lot of freedom. If I did, it, if I did not push through the fear, stress, resistance, and get back on the bike. It's taken a long time for me to feel confident and enjoy riding the bike. I still have my moments when it's raining and the hills are like ice rinks, but I'm able to manage the level of fear I experience. One of the things I realized I was doing was that my level of vision was short sighted when I was riding and looking at the road. What I discovered was that I was looking just a meter or two in front of me rather than looking ahead to bend with the road. So when a corner came up, I would be too late to be able to deal with, to be able to deal with it because my body hadn't had enough time to bend with the curve. As soon as I started looking ahead, then my riding significantly improved and I haven't fallen off since. Learning to ride a motorbike so reminds me of how my relationship with trauma used to be. When trauma dominated my life, I had a very short level of vision. I was only able to see what was directly in front or around me. I was short-sighted, hypervigilant and hypersensitive and unable to extend my vision. Trauma impacts on every facet of your life even though you may not realize it at the time. If I'd let fear take over, I would have consciously stopped myself from living a much healthier and better quality of life. Do I still get scared? Absolutely, 100%. But by combining and increasing my level of vision and understanding that I do slip into becoming frightened and fearful, that I'm able to reach into the trauma recovery method toolbox and apply one of the strategies and move through to the other side so it doesn't get the better of me. I'll take, we will take a closer look at pattern interrupters in chapter four and we'll take a deep dive. You owe it to yourself to take the time to discover who you are behind the mask of trauma, regardless of what anybody else is saying, regardless of how they're making you feel and regardless of what the media says about your unique relationship with trauma. The, ro the road to recovery and healing shouldn't stop or be put on hold because of what other people think about trauma. Other people's opinions that they hold and project onto you are none of your business. You don't need to take ownership of them. They don't belong to you. It's important to recognize that everybody has an agenda and that their ego is also going to be working hard in the background to try and protect you and them to keep you safe. Your recovery and healing journey isn't about them, it's about you. 
I believe you can't go forward without going backwards. The trick is to quickly move backwards in time with no emotional attachment to the events of the past. You want to take a helicopter view of the events that have created the beliefs and behavior that is now getting the way, in the way of your everyday life. Let me be crystal clear here. This does not mean that you take a deep dive into what happened. We want to avoid this and it is absolutely not necessary. Connecting the dots between experiences helps you to not only create a new perspective, but it also helps you to understand what has created your values, beliefs and behavior. So you can make the adjustments needed to live a healthier lifestyle. It's these events that have kept you emotionally frozen, stuck in time, and up until now, believing that they hold all the power, which is an illusion designed to keep you safe. Learning how to knit together and fully embrace your life experiences, the traumatic and emotionally charged events, and the uniqueness of them is going to be is a key ingredient in your I've got truck but I definitely don't mean truck <laughs> in your re trauma recovery and healing journey own your experiences rather than them owning you or having other people own you so that is a piece that I have wrote, written in chapter three on experiencing resistance. What happens when we step into resistance? A bit about why it happens and a bit of my personal story about being so resistant to change. But as I said, you It's not about brushing it under the carpet. It is about creating, embracing a new perspective so you're able to move forward. I think when we, when we deny our own story, and as I said, let me be crystal clear, it's not about going into the minute detail. That's not what we want to do. But when you, do, when you distance your story away from yourself, if you try and brush it underneath the carpet, you lose a little bit of who you actually really are. Then the trauma dominates your life. So it has the power over your, however it is that you're living your life. So it's about embracing the uniqueness of it and releasing the traumatized mind and allowing who you are, the beautiful essence of who you are to step forward. Let me know your thoughts. It's the first time I have showed this, shared this particular part of the book. Have you felt yourself feeling resistant when you are wanting to take a closer look at trauma? Have you had other people say, that's not a good idea. You should just leave that alone. What's been your experience? Just pop below in the chat box. That would be awesome. And I will leave a link to, for you to be able to get hold of the first chapter of the book, Be More Wolf, A Survivor's Story, Breaking the Trauma Cycle. You will be able to get access to the first chapter of the book, which is absolutely awesome. Okay, beautifuls, that is it. For me to, for me for today <laughs> and I look forward I will do another reading I'm going to do a reading once a week depending on what takes my fancy so I will see you next week and remember to tune in to the trauma recovery show I release new interviews a couple of times a week which is also awesome <laughs>